G'day you bloody dickheads, the vaping fucking bogan back once again, but no review as such today dickheads. Today we're talking fucking coils. We're talking the fancy kind of coils you put in your RDAs and your RTAs. These little fuckers here. And we're talking about the differences between China and the West. Because for years, you know, handmade coils, you know, they're produced by Instagrammers like MTurk and Twisted Messes, and then obviously that spurred on like a, a coil building culture. And you've got Instagrammers all over the world in Australia, the US, New Zealand, the UK, everywhere, you know, you've got these handmade coils being produced, but they're not fucking cheap, are they? You know, they're, they're handmade, they're kind of expensive, and you're paying anywhere from 15 to $25 for a pair of coils. And then you've got China more recently has started producing little packs, little packs of coils, um, a lot, lot cheaper. A lot, lot cheaper than, you know, the Western coilers. But what's the difference? Why would you spend 20 bucks on a set of, you know, coils versus, you know, 20 bucks on a fucking whole packet of coils? Uh, there is a difference in the, the construction and the materials used, but there's also, you know, a bit of uh, a difference between the design and the gauges of wires used and how they actually vape. So. That's what we're gonna fucking talk about today, dickheads. Hopefully I can get it all out in a, uh, a cohesive manner. This is the third time I've attempted recording this video and the other two times it's just ended up being a long fucking waffle with too much information. So hopefully we're gonna nail it today. So let's have a fucking toot, shall we? And a swill, gotta have your beer. So dickheads, what we're going to do is jump down into the up and close and quickly just have a look at, you know, some Western made coils and some Chinese made coils and see visually, you know, you can see much of a difference between these two coils, um, you know, and then we're going to talk about how they actually vape and, you know, my experiences with the cheaper coils versus the more expensive coils, what you can expect to get from them because like a lot of things in life, it is a get what you pay for sort of situation. Yes, there's obviously cheaper coils available, but they do perform differently and not as well, in my opinion, as the more expensive options out there. So we're going to try and talk about the differences. Let's get in there and have a bit of a squiz at a few different fucking coils from the West and from the fucking East. All fucking right, you kids. So we've got a bunch of different coils, some from China, some from the West. Uh, let's let's just start by having a bit of a fucking squeeze at some of these coils. So I'll start with my go-to, you know, my sort of favourite uh, coil. Uh, the reason I go for these is they give me the vape that I want, but they also allow me to run them in either a mechanical uh, device where uh, obviously the resistance and how quickly it heats up is really, really important. But being uh, a 0.11 ohm dual coil, I can still run these on my regulated devices as well. So that's something that um, you know I want to point out, particularly with the Chinese coils. A lot of the time, you know, as a uh, you know a hardcore mech mod user, the resistances are just a little bit too high a lot of the time, and I don't get the wattage that I want when using it on an unregulated device. Um, so these just meet all of my fucking uh, criteria. They're they're a core of 20, a 26 gauge um, nichrome um, wrapped in a 36 gauge nichrome with like an alien wrap. So these are, you know, the coils, they look like, you know, alien coils. Um, you know, you probably won't notice a huge difference from the China to the Western coils when you're just visually looking at them. But yeah, three millimeter inner diameter, uh, you're looking at five wraps there. And um, yeah, they come in at about 0.11 ohms on a dual coil. Really, really beautifully well-crafted coils. So that's my, my sort of go-to coil, um, the, the Game Over Man Aliens from Cloud Revolution. Uh, then you've got, you know, plenty of other coil builders from uh, around the world. You know, you've got your uh, stuff like this from uh, Sub Ohm Society in Canada. These are really, really good for series vaping um, because they come in a dual coil at 0.3 ohms. Um, they are a core of 28 gauge Canthol wrapped in 36 gauge N80. Um, and this is what they look like. And as you can see, you know, Visually, not a huge difference other than the fact that it's a much bigger coil because you've got uh, a lot more wraps there. You're looking at sort of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sort of eight wraps, I think it is. 
um, three millimeter inner diameter, but because these have got some canthol in them and uh, they are a triple 28 gauge core, they come in at 0.3 ohms for a dual coil and also the extra wraps add to that. And these are really good for when you want to vape on a series device because you want to get up to at least sort of 0.3 ohms for your unregulated series. So they're from Sub Ohm Society. Um, then you've got some more sort of fancy coils. These are from um, GM coils also over in Canada. These are a bit fancy. These are dragon scale coils. Um, and so some of the, the Western coils can get a little bit more exotic, you know, with the way that they're made. As you can see, these are quite shiny. The process of wrapping them, um, I think, kind of gives the metal a little bit of a polish. Um, but they're 26 gauge N80, uh, wrapped in 38 gauge N80, um, three millimeter in diameter. And um, I'm guessing that because of the, I think there must be a dual coil 26 gauge. I'm not 100% sure. See if the camera will focus in there. But yeah, so there's a few different coils. Um, we'll have a quick look at one other set. This is from um, uh, Coil Smith Co. here in Australia. Uh, these are basically a copy of some M-Turk coils, which have been around for a long time. These are just the same build M-Turk has done for ages. Um, triple 28 uh, gauge with 36 gauge wrap. I think it's all N80. Um, but what's interesting, and, and I will point this out here, is all the wire, see all wire is uh, is twisted messes. So the wire that um, Coil Smith Co. has used here, he has sourced from twisted messes in the United States. Um, and that's probably a good time to bring up the point about the materials that, um, that Western coil builders use versus Chinese coilers. Um, we're going to talk more about that in a minute, but... The Western coils are made from, you know, wires that are milled in the United States. So the actual wire itself is produced in the United States um, by companies like Sandvik and things like that. And the process that they go through producing those wires is a higher standard to the stuff that's milled in the, in, in China. Um, it's just a, a reality that the purity and the process they go through is done better in the United States. And that contributes to how long the coil lasts. But we'll talk more about that when we jump back up top. Let's have a quick fucking squeeze at some Chinese coils. Now, a lot of the Chinese companies are producing sort of big packs, big bundles of coils. So you get, you know, a whole range of different coils. Um, you've got uh, coil, coil Master here with, uh, you know, these, these octagon type fucking packets with um, you know all sorts of different types of coils in them. So you can play around with different builds. So you're getting a lot more coils for your money with the China stuff, but they also then produce you know just simple little two-in-one eight packs. These are just sort of two different types of coils and you get four or so of each. Um, so let's have a quick look. These are probably some of the closest coils that I found to you know the fa my favorite sort of Australian coils or, or Western coils from, from Cloud Revolution. So this one here is a, uh, a three core of, uh, if I can get the camera to fucking stay focused, a three core of 26 gauge uh, canthol um, and then a 36 gauge N80 wrap. So, you know, the only real difference between this coil here and my favorite Aussie made coils, uh, the core, instead of being um, nichrome, the core is canthol, but it's still three strands of 26 gauge and the wrap is still 38, uh, 36 gauge N80. But instead of doing an alien wrap, um, Geek Vape here have done just a standard Clapton wrap. As you can see there. But, you know, visually, the only real obvious difference is they've given it an extra wrap on the, um, on the Geek Vape. These have got six wraps. This has got five. And you've obviously got an alien wrap there as well rather than a Clapton wrap. Um, alien versus Clapton wrap, you know, I think they look nicer, but do they vape better? Hmm, maybe, maybe not, who knows. But uh, it's more about the gauge that they've used um, and the material. Being canthol, this is gonna take a little bit longer to heat up and it's gonna come up a little bit higher in resistance than the N80 um, Alien coil. And that's why I really like these from Cloud Revolution is they heat up quickly because they're all made of N80. But these will get pretty close um, and if you take a wrap off to make them five wraps, it will bring the resistance down. Um, they come in sort of about 0.15 as a dual coil. Um, but if you take a wrap off, you probably get them down to about 0.13. And if they had a, a, a nichrome core, well, then they would probably come in at the 0.11 like my favorite aliens do. Um, so that's, you know, that's a, a good example of, of something that's going to perform pretty closely to my favorite uh, Western coil. But again, because of the choice of material, um, not quite as quick on the ramp up because of the canthol. Um, and then you've got all these sort of other, 
more fancy type options. And this is where China kind of gets a little bit, um, gets, it, gets it a bit wrong, I think, um, compared to some of the, the Westerns, because they, they go and make some really fancy looking coils, but they don't really think about um, how this is going to perform in terms of uh, heat and, and how quickly they're going to ramp up. Because um, basically this design here, it's they call it a, a Clapton Helix coil. So it's sort of a, um, a Clapton and then you know twisted with another piece of wire. So as you can see, you've got like a really tiny, and I wish I had a macro lens dickhead so I could really get in here and show you the different bits of wire that are in this coil. But essentially it's a really, really small Clapton that has then been twisted with a, um, a piece of you know single strand wire. That's what's going on here. So single strand twisted with um, with like a Clapton, 28 gauge and then uh, 38 gauge wrapped around and then paralleled with 26 gauge. So this takes a long while to heat up um, and the resistance comes in at about 0.18 ohms. So again, dual coil, 0.18 ohms for my type of vaping on a mechanical mod, 0.18 is just gonna be way too high. I need it to come down lower. Uh, what else do they have in these crazy sets? You've got some all sorts of you know, interesting stuff. Um, you've got some parallel builds. These are quite nice. I do like how they've crimped little things around the, the uh, paralleled uh, wires so that they stay together and they don't slip out. Uh, what else have we got in here that we can show you that's sort of interesting? There's another pretty big crazy one. Uh, this one's from Geekvape. They call it a, a clapception, um, which I, I don't think is the proper term for this type of coil if you talk to the, 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 the you know Western coil builders. Um, but yeah, clapception, again, it's like a, a, a 28 gauge piece of wire that's been claptoned with 38 gauge, and then that has been claptoned around some 24 gauge. So there's a 24 gauge core here with a very, very thin clapton wire going all the way around it. Um, but as you can see, it's very, very big and thick. Like, look how thick that wrap is on that wire there. It's going to take a fair bit of power to heat up. Um, a dual coil is coming in at 0.28 ohms. So again, you know, more of your series type vape, big fuck off coils. So yeah, dickheads, um, there's a bit of a squiz at some of the uh, sort of different coil options, China versus the West. As you can see, visually, there's probably not a huge difference in looking at the wire. It, it looks like silver, shiny wire. Um, so what we're going to do is jump back up top and talk about performance and longevity and the stuff that you can't see you know, in these coils and how that's going to translate into, into the performance. Before we do that, though, let's have a quick little fucking squiz at how I clean up my fancy coils, how I get the best life I can out of them, um, and then we will uh, wrap it all up, dickheads. So let's have a look at that. Rightio, so I've got some series uh, coils in here sitting atop the uh, Calisag. This is the Bonza RDA they're sitting in. Uh, and as you can see, they're looking pretty black and kind of crusty. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of the wicks. Rightio, so we've got rid of our cotton and now we are ready to sort of pulse the coils and try and burn off all of this sort of black shit here. Now once I pulse them, what I like to do is give them a scrub with this uh, little wire brush thing that I've got here. Now I believe this is like a suede brush, it's actually used for cleaning suede shoes, but any kind of metal brush like this is going to work well. Um, Coil Master also actually sell little vape brushes, but they're very small and kind of dainty. This thing here I find gives me a much easier cleaning process. But all we're going to do firstly is get rid of all of that juice that's sitting on there, burn that off. And once we kind of loosened up all of that sort of uh, gunk that builds up on there, what we're going to do is actually give them a bit of a scrub. If you've got a metal brush like this, make sure you're not pulsing the uh, coils at the same time as you're cleaning them. And I want to try and get in down underneath some of those coils as well, try and get it from every angle.
Now, depending on your coils, once you've kind of given them a little bit of a brush and a scrub, you may have sort of slightly distorted the wrap. So you might want to just get your sort of screwdriver and just sort of realign everything exactly the way you want it. And they're looking pretty good. I mean, have a look at the uh, the metal again, you know, after looking really black and, uh, and grotty. Giving them a real brush actually makes a massive difference um, rather than just dry firing them and then re-wicking straight away after that. As you can see, they've come back to life. Rightio, dickhead. So there you go. That's how I fucking clean my coils up. Let's jump back up top, talk a little more about these fuckers, pros and cons of China and the West and, you know, what you get for your money. So there you go, dickheads. A bit of a fucking squiz at uh, a few different coils from the West and from China. And, you know, as you can see, visually to look at in terms of the wire that you see there, you're not going to be able to really tell, um, you know, the, the difference in materials and, you know, how they're going to perform. It's down to when you get them in your fucking atomizer and you start vaping it, um, obviously how that wire is going to perform just in terms of how quickly it heats up, the flavor that it puts off, all the rest of it. Um, but then obviously the other element, and that is the longevity. How long do you get out of, you know, Chinese coils and how long do you get out of Western coils? So that's hopefully what I'm we'll going to try and wrap up for you now. So let's just ta start with um, the process of manufacturing the wire that is then used to, to, to wrap and make those coils because... You know, the materials and the, the raw metals used to make that wire uh, is quite different from what you get in China as to what you get from the West. Now, I'm talking generally about, you know, most of, if not all, of the sort of Western coil builders, um, some that I've mentioned, you know, like MTurk and, and Twisted Messes and Clad Revolution and, um, you know, those sorts of Western um, coil makers, they're using wire generally that is sourced from the United States. So it's actually milled in the US, um, not by vape companies as such generally. You know, they, these are all wires that have been used in all sorts of applications long before vaping came along. You know, nichrome, canthol, um, nickel, you know, none of this was invented or, or made for the use in, in vaping. It's all been repurposed. But the stuff that's made in the US is usually made by companies, I'm just gonna rattle off one that I know of, um, Sandvik. Um, they're a, a wire producer. And what they do in producing the wire versus what China does producing the wire is different. And the purity and the longevity of that wire and how well it responds to heating and cooling and heating and cooling is different. Um, the Sandvik wires, the, the US milled wires, um, the what they call it, I think it's the annealment process um, of, of basically heating that wire up to a certain temperature, maintaining that temperature and then letting it cool um, actually hardens the wire and is the, the sort of finishing process that um, that these wires are given before you know the coil builders then get that wire and make the coils and all the rest of it and the US stuff is just produced better the annealment process the the coatings that they put on the wire the final metal coatings and the heating and cooling of that wire is done a lot lot better in the US than it is in China um, and even you know we see this with Chinese stainless steel in RDAs and sub tanks and things like that um, some of your cheaper you know stainless steels you know they say 304 or they say this greater stainless steel we don't really know for sure whether China is producing that greater stainless steel and I've seen in atomizers and sub tanks you know stainless steel get gunked up and blackened um, from juices that you don't see on the higher grades of stainless steel so we know that there is definitely different quality controls in China than there is in the West and that just comes through with the wire so you you'll find and I from my experience find that the wire will last a lot longer longer um, from your coils that are, that are made by Western coil builders because they're using that US milled wire, that Sandvik sort of wire, as opposed to the Chinese stuff. Um, the Chinese stuff just ends up wearing out a lot quicker. The annealment processes that they that they do are not the same as the US. So you, firstly, you're going to notice a longevity difference. For, for, so from a set of Cloud Revolutions, my favorite um, coils, I will usually get two to three months worth of use out of them before that wire has been heated and cooled and heated and cooled so much that it started to degrade. And that's what's gonna happen to all coils over the you know your, your usage you know you're going to heat it and cool it heat it and cool it just through vaping it but then when you dry fire them to clean them up and then uh, re-wick them all of that is fatiguing the metal when wearing it out and i notice that i get two to three months out of uh, a cloud revolution pair of coils and if i'm getting something from geek vape or coil master i might get a month 
um, you know, six weeks or something out of it before. It's starting to look pretty black and then you, you dry fire them and it just doesn't come back to life the way it used to. So that would be the first thing that I would point out and probably the main reason that I would buy expensive Western coils over the Chinese stuff is just how long it's going to last. You're going to be swapping out your coil less frequently. You're going to get longer vape time out of your, uh, out of your Western stuff. And that's basically down just purely to the, the type of wire and the quality of wire that they have used, China versus, versus uh, Western wires. Then you've got the actual gauge of wires that they've, that they've selected, um, how they've wrapped them, you know, what sort of construction have they put together in terms of uh, selecting the gauges of wire. What I noticed there is China is still kind of getting its head around what wires work best with what wires, what materials, canthol, nichrome, stainless steel, all those sorts of things. They're still kind of getting that wrap right because a lot of the time, you know, the coils that I get, particularly when they start doing the fancy stuff where they've got the big twisted crazy claptons, big thick gauge stuff, a lot of the time it takes a long while to heat up, um, either because the resistance is higher than what I like or there's just a lot of wire there. And when you start building big fancy coils with lots of different strands of wire, you end up building up quite a, a wire mass there. And sometimes the Chinese stuff, just it just takes too long to ramp up um, or it takes, takes too long to, to, to get warm. And, you know, it's just not a great vape. So for me, the, the Westerners still have a bit of an edge over the Chinese, you know, coils because they understand, you know, they're, they're built by vapors. I think a lot of these coils that China's producing are being designed, you know, not really by necessarily everyday vapors um, like, like you and me. They, you know, they're made by someone that works for a Chinese vape company and they go, hey, that looks pretty. Let's put that together. It looks fancy. Let's go with that. But in reality, how does that fucking really vape? Not always the best. So you've got the, the selection of wires, the selection of gauges, but then also you've got the process of wrapping and building those coils. Now, the, the Western coils, they're all made by hand. They're made by somebody who has got the Clapton or they've got the wire, they've made a Clapton wire out of that, and then they've taken that wire and they've hand wrapped that around a bit. The stuff that you get from China, well, like everything in China, it's mass produced, it's made on machines. And so I find that, you know, you get hot spots, you know, when you're strumming um, your coils to get them glowing evenly. Uh, I find you get a lot more hot spots with the Chinese coils. I'll also find you, you, you'll pop or blow legs um, a lot easier. So, you know, you'll be vaping and then, you know, there's a hot spot, a buildup of, uh, of, uh, of power, you know, in one section of the wire and that causes too much heat in that area and it actually blows the, the, the leg, pops the leg out of, your, out of your post hole and your coil's fucked. That happens a lot more with Chinese coils from my experience than it does with the Western coils because again, you know, the coils are wrapped by hand in the West. They're making sure that everything is even and, uh, and you know, you haven't got crazy build up of power in one spot. You're still going to get hot spots obviously with your Western coils, but I don't pop legs and blow coils um, quite as easily as you do with the Chinese stuff. So that's something also to take into account. Then you've got things like resistances as well. And, you know, like I mentioned, sometimes the resistances just aren't where I want them. Uh, a lot of the Chinese coils, and, and if we take, for example, that pack of that eight different types of coils that Coilmaster produce, there is not a single coil in there, not a single set of coils that for me comes to the resistance that I want it at. I like a 0.11 ohm coil on my mechanical devices because it ramps up quickly. None of those coil master coils come anywhere near 0.11. They're all 0.3s, which will then even out to a 0.15 with a, a single coil. Um, it's about as close as that I can get. I can't get anything down to the 0.11. So for me, there's just very few um, you know, Chinese coils that really hit the resistance that I want as well. And you can't really tell China to make you some special coils. With your Western coil builders, a lot of them, most of them have Instagrams, Facebooks, and if you send them a message saying, I want this coil, you know, I want this type of coil, I want, I want a coil that's this resistance, this is what I want to use it for, they can actually man, make you a coil specific to your needs. So you're not going to necessarily get that with the Chinese coils. And for me, a lot of the time, you know, I couldn't find a mass-produced Chinese coil that really meets what I want in a mechanical vape, if that makes sense.
Um, so yeah, I think that have I kind of covered everything I want to talk about, you know, you've got the materials that are being used, definitely better, um, you know, metals being used in the West, the overall design of the coil, the, the gauges of wire and how they're put together, not always quite as good in the Chinese department as it is in the West, the, the, um, the resistance that they come out to, uh, getting down to the 0 0.11, 0 0.12 resistance that I like, again, not many Chinese coils doing that, and also with the series coils as well, there doesn't seem to be a lot that are a bang on that 0.3 ohms, which is what I like and what a lot of people like on their series coils. So they still haven't quite grasped the different uses and the different applications. And the other thing that, uh, the final thing I would point out is when you're buying handmade coils, um, you're supporting small businesses. All right, when you buy a pack of Geek Vape coils or a pack of coil uh, master coils, you, you're supporting a big corporation, a big company in China. Yeah, obviously they've got individuals and, and people like you and I making a crust, working for them. But at the end of the day, the profits and everything else, they're not going down to the, to the lower echelons of the of the companies. When you buy from a handmade coiler in the US, Australia, or the UK, you're supporting small business. You're supporting someone who's working for themselves, who's hand making those coils, and you're helping them, you know, put bread on their fucking table. So that's also a little thing, you know, it doesn't at all affect how you how your vape's gonna vape, but it's nice, I think, to be able to support small businesses, grassroots, and you know, your everyday vapor, uh, as well as just the big mass-produced Chinese coilers. <laughs> But price-wise, dickheads, there is a considerable difference. You can buy, you know, 10 coils from China for the same price as a pair of coils from the, the West. Uh, you know, you're looking at my favorite, you know, coils here in Australia are $25 Australian. The Game Over Man Alien coils, they're 25 bucks. They're not cheap. But I buy them, or, or, or I would recommend anybody who likes mechanical vapes picking up a set of those coils because I know exactly how they're gonna vape. If I know somebody wants 100 watts on a mechanical device, they're gonna get it from a set of those game overs. They're gonna get the right resistance to get the white wattage, and they're gonna ramp up quickly and all the rest of it. Um, you know, f the packs of, of coils from uh, from China, you know, your, your Geek Vape and your Coil Masters, you know, the, the eight quad pack of octagon pack of fucking coils, you're looking at $25 and you're getting, you know, as I said, 10, 10 times the amount of coils that you do from the West. Are they going to last as long? Definitely not. Are they going to nail the vape that you want? No, but you get a fuck ton of coils to play around with. So if you're looking at getting into handmade coils or you're looking into putting fancy coils in your RDAs and your uh, RTAs and you're not quite sure exactly what kind of build that you like, well, buy some of those cheap Chinese coils. Um, buy the little two-in-one packs from Geekvape, buy the 10 packs, the, the eight packs or whatever from, from Coil Master and play around with them. Try the different coils and different um, applications. Um, are you a mech mod user? Are you not a mech mod user? Because if you're not a mech mod user, then the resistance of the coil is not so important because you've got your regulated devices to dial in the power you want to apply to that coil. So definitely not saying that Chinese coils are shit and I would always go out and buy um, you know, Western expensive coils. Not everybody can afford to do that and not everybody needs to do that. It depends on what you want. If you're a regulated vapor, then the Chinese coils are probably gonna be a lot more suitable because resistance is not so important. Um, but once you've been playing around with coils and you kind of figure out what type of vape you want, um, you may not be able to get that from the Chinese coils. You might need to look at some of those Western coil builders. So um, yeah, I don't know whether I'm making a whole lot of sense, whether it's just been a big long fucking waffle, but hopefully that kind of gives you an idea as to why I think spending money on the expensive coils is worth it to me. Is it worth it to you? Not necessarily, but there is a difference in those coils and what you get in terms of longevity and the performance you get immediately from the coil. Whether or not you want to spend that money and that sort of pros and cons are worth it to you, that's up to you, dickheads. But I'll put some links down below to um, some of my favorite coil builders from the West and also put some links to some of those cheaper Chinese coils that Geek Vape are producing. Obviously, you can find those sorts of things all over the place. And there are tons and tons and tons of handmade coil builders out there that are producing coils cheaper than some of the others out there. Um, and, you know, you don't necessarily have to spend $25 on a pair of handmade coils. You can you can get plenty of nice Claptons from Western coil builders for, for $10. $15 a pair and they're still going to be longer lasting and better performing in my opinion than a lot of the other Chinese stuff So do with that what you fucking will dickheads <laughs> I 
I think once you figure out exactly what kind of vape you like across the majority of your devices, and for me, I've found that a long while ago, and that's a 0.1 ohm Alien or Clapton coil that ramps up quickly. I can use it on my mechanical, I can use it on my regulated devices. Um, that's for me what I like, and so I look for that so type of thing in, in the coils that I want to put in my RDAs and, and RTAs, and China just doesn't quite really get there all the time with what I'm looking for. So the thing about wraps it up, dickheads, as I said, I'll put some links down below to a few different places, both West and uh, Eastern coilers. Uh, also include my usual Instagram and Facebook if you want to check out what I'm doing outside of the YouTubes. If you want to support the channel, then please fucking do. We're 100% independent here. I don't accept funding, sponsorships, or affiliate links. So uh, yeah, hit up my Bogan Brews juice line down below or my Patreon page. There's prizes and there's giveaways and there's content you won't see here. And all that keeps me doing my fucking thing. But if you can't do any of that, that's all good. Just sit back, sub your fucking dicks off, sub your fucking tits off. But above all, dickheads, stay off the bloody stinkies. It doesn't matter whether it's a fancy Western coil or a cheap Chinese banger as long as you're not on the fucking stinkies. That's what I'm fucking here for. Cheers for tuning in and cheery fucking oh. The vaping fucking bogan back once again, but no fucking review today. Something a little. I'm twitching and shit. What am I fucking twitching for? Back once again for another dinky diet. Rip, 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 rip. Producing some of their own. Fuck. <clears throat> they sell them obviously, and you, you fuck me. Uh, are using? You know the the wire is milled. Fuck me. <clears throat> Fucking review today as such, dickheads. We're gonna be. <clears throat> or your little. Uh... Oh, fuck. Um, Australia, Canada, all of those sort of places. Oh, mama.